drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to my Imperial Stout Conditioning and Bottling Guide video. In this video, we'll take you through all steps needed after fermentation is over to then bottling this beer. Do note that this also applies to other strong beers, not just Imperial Stouts, but I will cover this in more detail shortly in this video. You may have seen a video on this YouTube channel that was uploaded the 2nd of January 2017. This resulted in an Imperial Stout beer that was 13% in alcohol. Because this beer was so strong and that I wanted the very best resulting beer from the brew, I have let it condition for over a year in my basement. It has been stored in a carboy all this time, awaiting its prime. I am happy to say that the day has now come to bottle this beer, and I invite you to join me in the process. First, let us look at why conditioning time is so important for such a beer. The stout beer style is what is commonly referred to in the beer world as a malt forward beer. That is, that its flavours are developed from malt. Beers like IPA styles, for example, are known as hop forward styles as a comparison. Strong malt forward styles like this one take a much greater time for them to come into their prime drinking state. That's not to say that this beer would have not tasted good after, say, three to six months, because it probably would have. For people that are happy with a simply good beer, then that is fine. Drink it after three to six months. But I would caution you that you are simply missing out on the full potential of a strong beer. A strong beer like this one that is conditioned for a year plus will transform gradually from being simply good to exceptional. Why have good when you can have exceptional? Hopefully I have your attention now, let us continue. When we condition a beer, this is best done in bulk containers and not bottles. This is why strong alcoholic drink products are stored in bulk commercially. This adds cost of course, but it's certainly worth it. Luckily for us, to do this on a homebrew level, the extra cost is minimal. These containers come in many different shapes and sizes, and are known as carboys or demijohns. In years gone by, glass was used a lot, but with plastic technology on the rise, we have plastic containers these days that are very suitable also. Not to mention that they are lighter and feel far less dangerous when dropped. Once your beer's fermentation is over, instead of bottling the beer, you simply transfer it using a siphon into your carboy up to the neck to ensure that it doesn't suffer with oxidisation. Purging the neck area of the carboy with CO2 will further seal the deal. My Imperial Stout from January 2017 was added to a carboy that is 11.4 litres in size. My brew was 15 litres, so I simply bottled the remainder at that time. I tried a bottle every few months to whet my appetite for what was coming in 2018. The bottled versions give an idea of what is coming, but the bulk conditioned version is always superior. So now it is finally time to get my Imperial Stout into bottles so that I can savour it. The first thing to realise is that you will need to add fresh yeast. The yeast that was once alive within your brew has long since died and will be totally useless. When fermenting a strong beer you will need an appropriate yeast with enough alcohol tolerance. This is the same when choosing a yeast for carbonation in your bottles. Often it's best to use the same yeast as before. Pitch the same amount of yeast as you did previously when it was for fermentation. Let's look at the process now from start to finish. So here is my Imperial Stout. This has been stored up on a shelf. When removing these, do so as gently and as carefully as possible. We do not wish to disturb any trub at the bottom. Note that I have labelled the beer. This avoids confusion when you have other projects going on at the same time. 
The first steps are to clean the bottles, bottling bucket and siphon. I do this all at once with cleaner in the bottling bucket with the bottles and siphon added. While this is soaking, I prepare the bulk priming sugar for carbonation in my bottles. To calculate this, I use the Brewer's Friend tools. Here is a direct link to this on screen. It's under the bulk priming calculator section of the tools on this website. So you can see here that the calc tells me that I will need 51.9 grams of regular table sugar for this 11.4 litre batch. So I measure this out, rounding it up to the nearest gram. I then boil some water in my kitchen's kettle. I then add the sugar and add a small amount of the water into a small pan on my stove and mix until all is dissolved. I then add a lid to the pan and set it to cool in a small sink with cold water in it. I then wash out my bottles and start sanitising them. I then add them to my bottling rack. It's then time to sanitise the bottling bucket and siphon. Please see my bottling A to Z guide video on this channel for more details on this process. I then start siphoning the beer into a bottling bucket. Once this has started I then add fresh yeast and priming sugar. This will ensure an even mix within the beer. As a safeguard I run some of the beer over the fresh yeast. Do this very carefully as we do not wish to add oxygen. The foam you see here is star sand by the way. Don't fear the foam as they say. During this transfer be sure to take a small amount in a sampling glass. Naturally you're not tasting how the bill will be later on once it has carbonation, but it's an enjoyable first taste always anyway. With the beer now in your bottling bucket, it is now time to start transferring it into bottles. For some people this will be the last stage before drinking, but personally I enjoy making labels for all of my beers, so that they not only taste great, but look the part also. To do this with a minimal of fuss but with great results, I use a website called Beer Labelizer. They have a small selection of free labels, or 5 US dollars, unlocks the full thing for life. This is a bargain in my eyes. So here is the finished batch, complete with labels. I really look forward to sampling the carbonated version soon. I hope you have found this video to be interesting, useful and enjoyable. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!